Groven back once again with Trisbic for the second match of the day between Pandemic Legion and Cry Havoc. Pandemic Legion has brought a Loki, Claymore, two Rooks, Scimitar, two Manticore, two Nemesis, and a Hound. And Cry Havoc have two Proteuses, a Dominix, a Guardian, two Ishtars, and two Ishkers. Fair to say we may see some drones. I think that is a safe bet, yes. Uh, Pandemic Legion bringing an identical setup to the last round, and we'll see how it fares for them this time. We've had the 30-second countdown in local, now 10-second countdown in local. We are just about ready to go. I'm actually very interested in this match. We were discussing what might be strong against this bomber setup, and, um, and I think this might be something that'll work. And the match is go. So let's take a look at what kind of drones we're seeing here. Looks like a lot of Warrior 2s. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 bombs on the field. 5 bombs racing toward the Cry Havoc team. And oh my god, Ishker's down. Proteus is and everything else out of shields. Wow! I, <laughs> that was a display. I've been struck dumb. Uh, uh, that's the, easily the most effective use of uh, bombs we've seen in the tournament so far. And before this fight started, I actually told Kroven, I said, you know, uh, this pandemic fit I, or this pandemic team setup, I don't think it's uh, super effective. I'm surprised they brought it again. And once again, uh, foot, mouth. Well, you Hello. know, the Pandemic team, in previous matches, they've been making extensive use of, uh, of torpedoes, as we're seeing now, those torpedoes absolutely melting this poor Ishtar. But um, this is, I, I don't think we've seen, definitely not this kind of use of bombs out of them. And if we'd seen bombs out of them previously, I, for one, didn't notice. And now we're seeing, I'm just, I'm, I'm dumbstruck. Um, because in, uh, not only that, but, uh, you know, obviously there's unpiloted drones out there now. When those bombs go off, with that Cry Havoc team all in the center of the field, with all those drones out, when those bombs go off, suddenly your drone team has a big problem. That was fantastic coordination, too. I mean, launching those kind of drones, is, or uh, launching those bombs in such a tight formation to, to really hit the entire team at once is not very easy. No, well, and I mean, honestly, Cry Havoc should have should have seen this coming. Um, they brought the bombers last time. They brought bombers the previous round. They had to know that they, you know, Pandemic Legion brought bombs at the very least. So, you know, warping all of your drone team in at zero meters to the beacon when you know they're going to be coming in at 20 or 30, probably not the best turn of strategy there. As now we're seeing Mistress Suffering's Proteus already out of armor. It's just absolutely mind blowing how much damage these torpedoes are doing to cruiser hulls. I mean, they, they turned an Ishtar into into a pile of rubble and have absolutely melted uh, the Proteus, which, as we've seen in, in previous matches, is no slouch. This, um, this Pandemic Legion team showing that they... You know, they, they're here to prove that they are, the, you know, not only are they the defending champions, but they intend to be the reigning champions next time as well and, uh, and are putting on one hell of a show with these torpedoes everywhere. There's explosions, there's death and mayhem, another Ishtar already down, and Cry Havoc is just being absolutely slaughtered in the middle of the arena. Yeah, there's a lot of target painters going off that... Uh that Pandemic Loki and Claymore are right in the thick of things, uh, just lighting things up with the auto cannons. Yeah, it's... The, the Cry Havoc team also launched all of their drones at the beginning, which I feel like if you even break up the formation a little bit, the bombs become considerably less effective. Yeah, and, and I, just, I just have to think that Cry Havoc, I don't... I'm not sure. Maybe they were too busy posting on the forums about how biased we are, but... Um, <laughs> But clearly, they didn't think through this warp in point as, uh, as my dear friend Callisto is in half armor. Uh, Callie, if you're listening to this somehow, uh, give us a call tonight and we'll, and we'll go hang out in, the, in, Re in downtown Reykjavik. Um, but uh, he's in deep trouble now in about quarter armor, and I, I hate to see a Proteus go down. I just hate it. I, I don't particularly have a problem with it. It just reminds me of me losing my own very expensive Proteus is all. But uh, Pandemic Legion, I mean, there's really not much else to say, but we're going to say it anyway. Um, just an enormously strong setup. You know, last time uh, they, they would bring similar setups over and over until it got to the very end and, you know, would then change things up enough to, to still be very effective. Uh, that Proteus down now, and now it's just a matter of mopping up. You know, it, it's just... 
absolute contempt for the Cry Havoc team here. The Guardian is is just chilling out. I mean, I'm sure he's probably jammed into oblivion by this point, but uh, not even bothering, really, you know. <laughs> just just letting him chill out next to his Dominic's buddy. Uh, the Dominic's actually smart bombing. Interesting choice when you bring a drone team, but uh, Dominic's is smart bombing now, down to about one-third armor, and gosh, I think I need to go buy a Nemesis. Yeah, I mean, this... the. This match has just been pandemic from from literally the get go. They they've had the initiative the entire time and have just not let up the pressure at all. Yeah, and it, it absolutely stunning display. Uh, I I think we're gonna see you know if they if they're able to keep this up and and somebody isn't able to counter this setup. You know, Pandemic Legion may not have to change anything to get back to the finals and even to win the finals. Uh, Pandemic obviously puts tons of time and effort into into all of these uh, all of these setups. I've got a lot of uh, former friends from MC. Uh, one of them on the field here, Korax, an old, an old friend, and uh, I got to talk to uh, to Tripline yesterday about some of the uh, some of the planning that goes into this and. You know, they take it very seriously, and uh, there's some very, very good pilots over there, so... And, and they're demonstrating why they are the reigning champions here. So, very, very, just... I would say I'm speechless, but that would be a blatant lie. Um, <laughs> I'm, in fact, never rendered never rendered speechless as, uh, as Cry Havoc's... Cry Havoc's final ship, the Guardian, goes down in a, in a horrible, horrible flaming death. And uh, Pandemic Legion, a flawless victory. So with that, we will give it back to Soundwave in the studio. Or are we giving it back to us? <laughs>